beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come to God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed silent in his presence just the instruments just play something just soak in that glory so play minors not not this just be still for a minute i'm teaching you something it's a culture it's a training there are times that when you worship you just need to be quiet then you let him speak he will speak in pictures he will speak in words he will speak by moving your understanding. This is how we interact. These are the mysteries of the secret place. Just let him speak. It's more than an impartation. It's him speaking back to you. Don't change the sounds, guys. Be sensitive. You were playing something else. Let him speak to your spirit. That's why you came. You think it's just an impartation, but it's not an impartation. It's the power of his voice upon your spirit, man. Answers coming from heaven. Answers coming from heaven. Now arise, O oh Lord. Don't sing with me. Would you come? to your resting place you and the ark of your might and then we will rejoice as we clothe in your righteousness we celebrate your love just be silent and soak in that presence For your name is holy, you're so holy, holy are you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
From the rising of the sun Right until it's going down Just be still, we will sing Of the mercies of the Lord We will preach Of the favor of the Lord We will shout Of the goodness of the Lord we will speak of the power of the Lord. Just be still and know. Believe me, make no mistake to allow the devil make you think you are wasting your time. You are getting more than a sermon. This is koinonia. It's an interaction of the spirit. A quickening. Your weakness being changed by his strength. Mm. Holy fire burn upon my altar. From within me, spirit to take over. Holy fire burn upon my altar. Holy fire burn upon my altar. From within me, Spirit to take over, holy fire burn upon my altar, holy fire, holy fire, holy fire burn upon my altar. Holy fire, burn upon my altar. From within me, spirit to take over. Holy fire, burn upon my altar. Let the weight of your glory fall Let it cover all the earth The Spirit of the Lord is mighty in this place Let the weight of your glory fall It's bringing healing healing the healing anointing is strong in this place incurable diseases under the atmosphere of his shakaina salamaranda katos lagatos taking away weaknesses taking away yokes and burdens let it cover all the earth let it cover all the earth beauty for ashes the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified a few minutes and you'll be seated I'm taking away burdens. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking. Taking away burden. He's rolling away the reproach of your past. Rolling away the reproach of your past. The Spirit of the Lord is rolling away the reproach of your past. 
that this proverb will no longer be used in your life. Shalabaranda gadabalakotosiadai. The Lord is rolling away reproach. Tears, physical tears are coming out of my eyes. And the Lord is saying, this is the captivity of a family being rolled away. Rolled away. I'm sensing the burden of a family. A family that has been under captivity. And the Lord is saying in this season, he's rolling it away. Rolling it away. This is the cry of the spirit. Just let God do what he's doing. Let it be rolled away, O God. Let it be rolled away, O God. Let it be rolled away, O God. The cry of a family coming to the ears of the Savior, the Redeemer. He's rolling it away. A widespread plague of sickness. A widespread plague of failure. A widespread plague of death in His presence. Mighty, mighty presence. Resting on everything that is not the Christ. Hello, I don't God and God by yourself. Your majesty, 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 your majesty. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing an activation of the gift of the Spirit. This is what the Lord is ministering to me. I'm seeing dormant spiritual investments finding expression. Graces that were once in use and for some reason just went down. It's like there is an opening in the Spirit and suddenly I'm seeing gifts being activated. The word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the deciding of spirit, revelatory gifts, being activated by the spirit of the Lord. Being activated by the spirit of the Lord. Yeah, 
You see, what this session is doing is it is killing the flesh. The flesh hates what is happening. This is one of the ways that the flesh is crucified by exposing the flesh to the light of his power. It's an uncomfortable position for the flesh. Just a few minutes and you'll be seated. This is not the making of a man. It's the Holy Ghost doing something to your spirit, man. There are some of you, the Lord is giving you new tongues, new prayer languages, new tongues, new tongues. New tongues, new tongues. It's giving you new tongues, new tongues. You will no longer pray like you have prayed before. A new language, a new frequency in the spirit. This is what is happening. I'm seeing coals of fire being put upon the tongues of people. New tongues, new tongues. That's what the spirit of the Lord is revealing to me. New tongues, utterances of the spirit, utterances you have never heard before, utterances you have never known before. Some of you, they will start right here at Koinonia, and for others, it will be at your secret place. Some it will be at your prayer group. Just fix your eyes upon Jesus for the next one or two minutes. Yeah. Yeah. The oil of favor. The oil of favor. The oil of favor. The oil of favor. I hear this in my spirit. I echo it and I hear it in my spirit. The oil of favor. The oil of favor. Lord, let it flow like a river everywhere within this building, everywhere within the overflows, online the oil of favor that you will be drenched and you will be soaked in this oil, leaving this service to a realm of extraordinary fruitfulness by the favor of God. Hallelujah. Just close your eyes if you can. Just focus on Jesus. One minute. Please don't be distracted. Whether Whatever is happening around you is none of your business. Just be focused. Hear what he says to you. Hear what he says to you about your life. Hear what he says to you about your relationship with him. Hear what he says to you about your family. Hear what he says to you about the solution. Hear what he says to you. Hear what he says to you about the pain. Hear what he says to you about your ministry. You can trust what you are hearing now. You can trust what you are hearing now. It can't be the devil speaking to you. Not after this atmosphere. 
you can trust what you are hearing now for some of you he's saying i am still god i am still god in spite of all that has happened in your life i am still god i am still god i am still god you have come too far to doubt i am still god I am still God. Spirit of the living God, evermore we desire you. You have called this place Koinonia, a place of your presence. a place of victory a place of renewal a place of revival a place of restoration restoration of fire restoration of hunger restoration of grace Restoration of patterns. Restoration of covenants. We pray tonight that Jesus and him alone be glorified in this place. And Father, I pray if this is all you do tonight we are more than grateful for giving us an experience that shifts us to realms unimagined this is what separates us from noisemakers this is the factor of the spirit evermore spirit of the living god this remains your place evermore evermore replace any man as you will and as you wish shift us to whatever direction we are that malleable we pray that as men look at men they will not see men but they will see jesus in the midst of the lamb stands in the midst of the candle stands We are giving ourselves wholly to this because we know that our profiting will appear unto all. We are tapping, O oh God, into the ancient mysteries that you taught our fathers. You taught they that went ahead of us that when men stay in your presence, they can renew their strength like the eagle. They can mount up with wings they can run and not be tired they can walk and not be weary we exchange our weaknesses tonight with your strength we exchange our frustrations we exchange our limitations we exchange our pain we exchange our fears we exchange our doubts we exchange our confusions because worship is a place of exchange more than a place of reception let everything that is not you in us leave us let everything that is not you in us be exited out of our lives let everything that is not you in us leave and let that space be filled experientially with more of you more of your light more of your power more of your wisdom a deeper hunger for fellowship more than ministry more than preaching more than leadership more than prosperity more than fame 
more than money may we desire you remain the object of our pursuit remain the object of our passion remain the jurisdiction of our pursuit Merci, merci. Thank you, Father. We bless you. We honor you. And we worship you. Forever be glorified. This is Koinonia. You have called it by its name. You have engraced it by understanding. Let this place remain a tabernacle of your presence. You can do without us, but please carry us along. There are infinite replacements, but we pray by the message of the God of heaven. Let this place remain a center where your eyes continue to behold. Let this place remain a place of mysteries. Let this place remain a place of encounters. Let this place remain a place of miracles, signs, wonders. Let this place remain a place of bread, Bethel. Understanding the richness, the abundance of your supplies. Let this be the wealthy place. The place where you exchange our limitations for the supplies of heaven. Let this place remain the place where men meet with God. We vow that forever you will be glorified. We vow that forever we will only lift up the anthem of your name. We hide behind the cross. We hide our flesh. We hide every personal agenda. And we pray that Jesus and him alone will be seen experienced and known thank you father thank you for your atmosphere in the name of jesus christ amen please sit quietly if you can god bless you whoa Just help those under the anointing. Very powerful time. Very, very powerful time. Every once in a while, God will show up in these dimensions. Those under the anointing, just help them. Just keep them somewhere quiet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A few minutes with us tonight and then we will pray I want to encourage everyone to continue to press towards the things of God um, it's very easy to be distracted in this kingdom it's very easy to lose focus to major on the minors let's settle down please those inside outside and minor on the majors but God brings us here to help us even by his spirit I want to share with you something very briefly that I believe is very powerful and very instructive and then we'll have the opportunity to pray if you're with me please say amen, amen. it's a revelation that God put in my heart is for koinonia but then it's for the body of Christ and I believe that the Lord will help us tonight. Why prophecies fail? Please write. And let's discuss within a few minutes a very powerful understanding that God gave me. Why prophecies fail?
first timothy chapter one please and verse 18 believers continue to struggle with the tragedy of unfulfilled please listen please listen unfulfilled prophecies praise the lord the lord is speaking to someone in overflow one it will not happen as you have seen i don't know what i'm saying but the lord is just asking me to speak it just like that it will not happen as you have seen i believe that tonight's um, message may be why the anointing is moving in this dimension it will not happen as you have seen it will not happen as you have seen it will not happen as you have seen in the name of jesus christ praise the lord so many believers continue to battle with unfulfilled prophecies here and there men and women of god all over the world continue to speak the counsel of god the word of god to individuals but then we notice that people receive these prophecies and most now let me tell you sincerely most of the prophecies we receive never come to pass and tonight is an attempt to very quickly show us what may be wrong and then also to reveal to us the place of the prophetic listen very carefully and the place of the word of god because there are people for instance who have seen things in visions in dreams or have received prophetic words from anointed people genuine people filled with the holy spirit and these prophecies may not have been consistent with the dealings of god some of them may have been negative prophecies and they have remained helpless believing that just because a man anointed by god accredited by god made a pronouncement and utterance to them it meant that nothing could be done about it and then they sit down and allow those prophecies happen so we're dealing with the prophetic today and i pray that god will grant us understanding so let's go very quickly our time is gone read with me verse 18 everyone want to read this charge i commit unto thee son timothy uh-huh according to the prophecies which went before on thee that thou war a good warfare stop there paul is speaking to his son in the gospel timothy and he's saying that some prophecies were released to go ahead of you now understand what he's saying he's encouraging him he's saying mr man be assured of this that we have released prophetic words to go ahead of you but he tells him that by them those prophecies that have gone ahead of you you will war a good warfare hallelujah so it is possible that prophetic words can be sent ahead of a person please listen very carefully whether in ministry in family life business career whatever it is that the prophetic is real now let me balance this up front even before we continue our discussion there are people here and there who probably because of their religious affiliations their denominations or the kind and the structure of mentorship they may have received may have been trained by well-meaning sincere men and women of god to ignore or despise the prophetic to despise prophecy we find people some persons have been very vocal about the fact that the prophetic is not useful in today's church and all versions of sarcasm has been communicated as regards the prophetic the bible says very clearly and i think that i will just um solve that once and for all in first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 20 let the word of god speak once and for all first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 20 if you're a christian please read with me one to read despise not 
prophesying. One more time. This is a warning. Do not despise prophesying. Do not despise the place of the prophetic in your journey to knowing God and living a meaningful life. That means that the Bible recognizes that there is a place for the prophetic. Okay? So we establish that up front that there is a place for the prophetic. And the Bible says to not despise it. That means that if you find yourself in an environment where yourself or the leaders around you continue to despise prophesying, you don't have to fight anybody, you don't have to create trouble, but let it be a settled conviction within you that in the journey of a believer, there is a place, listen carefully, there is a place for the prophetic. There is a place for prophesying. Are we together? When it comes to the prophetic, the Bible lets us know that even scripture is prophecy. Do you agree with me? Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19, please. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. It says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. When you read in context coming down, you will know that he was speaking about scripture as a more sure word of prophecy. It says, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. Now listen very carefully. So he's telling you that there are prophesyings that have to do with the speakings of men under the influence of the holy spirit are we together he's telling you that there is another kind of prophesying that is the revelation as captured in scripture he says to also take heed as well so do not despise the prophesyings that has to do with the speakings of men and that you do not despise the prophesying that has to do with the authority of scripture the prophecy of scripture we call it are we together now yes the character of these two dimensions of prophetic operations are not the same please listen very very carefully so the bible is prophetic the words that are written in scripture are prophetic the words that are spoken by a man under the influence of the spirit of god to you real time is also prophetic but in terms of superiority please listen they are not all the same although engineered by the spirit of god the bible lets us know please look at me that the prophecy of scripture and the prophecy that comes from a vessel, they are all together to the edifying of the saints, but they do not hold the same weight in the spirit. You have to learn this. The word more sure means more reliable, more dependable. Are we together? It attempts to show you the excellency of the prophecy of scripture. That means that if given an option for both of them, the Bible gives you its recommendation in terms of reliability and certainty. It tells you to depend on the prophecy that comes from scripture. Are we together? There are many reasons for this and that's, that's, not, that's not where I'm going tonight. My goal is to show you why prophecies fail and then to connect a few things and we'll pray. The Bible in many expressions tells us that scripture has been tried seven times the word seven there means complete that the truths of scripture have been vetted again and again and has been found reliable listen the bible is not the only book that contains pieces of the wisdom of god listen carefully here and there God has dealt with people. Here and there, different religions 
have tapped into the wisdom of God through the understanding of his principles. And they have captured details that are consistent with God's operation. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Chances are that you can pick a book that is non-Christian. You can pick any religious book on earth and read it and you will find communications that are consistent with the way God would have spoken and how God would have acted. And the results even in those books show you that the agency that supplied that result was not of the devil. It's not an endorsement to the books. The advantage of the Bible is that as a singular compendium, it contains the wisest perspective in all matters. Are we together now? Listen very carefully now. It contains the wisest perspective. Why? Because they are God's opinion. Among all of the books that have been arrayed for the edification of man, the Bible, as a compendium of 66 books, has been recommended by the Spirit of God that it can guide men to know God. It can guide men to become victorious. When you study theology, you will find out that there are many other books. They are generally called extra-biblical texts. There is what we call the annals of the king. There's what we call the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's what we call the books of Jasher. All of these books are extra-biblical materials that were written. Are we together now? But then in the wisdom of God and through his predeterminate counsel, he has found out that the truths contained in this compendium we call the Bible is sufficient to be the limit of the jurisdiction of your knowing God. You will find many books that contain certain information that may not be captured here. And God is telling you within the context of your civilization, any knowledge about me that is not in this volume is not required for life and godliness in as much as you're working with me is concerned. So the Bible becomes the coordinates if you allow me use that word the bible becomes the defining jurisdiction for your knowing god listen very carefully i'm showing you the reasons why the word of god is called a more sure word of prophecy god has vetted the truths here and found out that any believer that settles with scripture as contained in this book under the influence of the Holy Spirit, there is no dimension of God required for your knowledge that the truths here in partnership with the Holy Spirit cannot bring you into. So it's called the most sure word. It has predicted your life already. More than any man can predict. More than any man can prophesy. Are you getting what I'm telling you now? The vessel that speaks to you is limited by many factors. Number one, the accuracy of his or her perception. Number two, the accuracy of his or her interpretation. Number three, the atmosphere that became the influence upon which he spoke. Are we together? Number four, the level of renewal of that vessel as at the time he spoke. All of these are factors all together that can interrupt the purity and the quality of the speakings. It doesn't mean the person is fake. These are the things that water down the efficacy of the prophetic. Are we together? And then the mental development of that prophet or that speaker also matters. Chances are that if naturally speaking... I'm a person that detests excellence. If God is giving me a prophetic word that relates to excellence, my, my prior fortitude for trivializing excellence will make that prophetic word not come with the gravity with which it left heaven. Because in my person, I don't find excellence to be something that is needed. If I'm someone, for instance, who does not believe finance and prosperity is useful, are we together? If a prophetic word comes 
that God is going to make Sam a millionaire. Remember, I've trained myself to be embarrassed to even talk of millionaire because I've interpreted it as carnality. Chances are that I would just say you are going to be blessed. You see that now. So the efficacy of that prophetic word was corrupted by the limitation of my spiritual understanding. But then let's assume, for instance, that I was accurate enough to deliver it to be fair enough and you now receive it now remember i'm not fake remember i'm anointed remember you too you are not fake you see that now yes the giver and the believer have to be real for it to work so we agree that two of us are not fake are we together and now you receive that word and then it never comes to pass and you go back to god and say lord what happened I got a prophetic word by a man of God and according to the word he said by June I will have a car remember he called my name it was accurate he called the name of my wife it was accurate every other detail was accurate so it supported my believing him yet it did not happen I even fell down you can add it and it didn't happen he prophesied to me that as I return back, my ministry will expand. He described in detail my ministry. Called the name. Called everything. I went back and after five years were worse than even before I came for that consultation. What is the reason? Why do prophecies fail? This is a question that even men of God, apostles and prophets themselves, have not seemed to find an answer to. So usually, as men, the obvious answer is to transfer blames. So I come to you and I say, it has to be your fault. You didn't have faith. You didn't believe me. My track record is there to show. And then the other person says, well, I may have my track record, but I don't know what happened to you as at the time you are speaking to me. I know that it was not God. And then we read scriptures like God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. Are we together now? When you read these scriptures, it further confuses you. Because you are now looking and saying, that means that it is within God's power to bring his word to pass. The reason why many people are confused over spiritual things is because we don't read our Bibles. We listen to people. But we don't study scripture. We do morning devotions. We listen to messages online. Profitable and wonderful. But we don't stay with scripture. For the purpose of building understanding. Building conviction. So most of our convictions are outsourced and borrowed. Our convictions are hardly intrinsic. Something that came as a result of a revelation given by God. Most of our convictions are outsourced. We borrow the confidence of someone we respect. Just because the person said, this is it. We say, this is it too. Why do prophecies fail? Hallelujah. Are we blessed? So many people have relaxed and crossed their legs so many people have even written the prophetic words that were spoken unto them barren women have received prophecies you will have a child and it's five years gone no child sick people in the hospital receive prophetic words do you have a loved one in the hospital yes sir is he sick yes sir about to die yes sir thus saith the lord he shall not die Isaiah 38. Mighty God, we give you praise. Give us understanding and be glorified. Isaiah chapter 38. Mm. In those days, look up please. 
was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, Isaiah the what? The son of Amos came unto him and said, help me read. Thus saith the Lord. Stop there. So we agreed that it was not the speakings of Isaiah. Thus saith who? The Lord. Set thy house in order. Why? For thou shalt die and not live. Don't call anybody fake again because the prophecy is negative. Who spoke negative here? Thus saith who now? Talk to me. I mean, we're Christians. Don't just begin to... The man was a vessel. I brought you Jumia package. You opened it and saw a gun and you arrested. No, you, you don't. I, I was sent. I'm a messenger. Thus saith the Lord. Set your house in order. He says, for thou shalt die. Who are you going to beg? Who will you beg to help you beg God? That God sends a prophet and he speaks. Put your house in order. You are going to die. Verse 2. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed unto who? <laughs> He turned and prayed unto the Lord. Verse 3. And said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. And with a perfect heart, and I have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept so. Verse 4. Then, then, hold on. The first time he said, Thus saith the Lord. Now he's saying, The word of the Lord came to Isaiah, saying, Verse 5 Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father. I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. Listen. What was wrong, O oh God, with your understanding? Couldn't you see the end from the beginning again? You sent a prophet with your reputation on him. And within minutes, prophecies changed. This is a discussion between God and a man a man goes to God and say God what did I hear that you said you said I'm going to die let me do something to you that will make you change your own word please listen I have added now 15 days to your, to your years verse 6 and I will deliver thee and this city from the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city. Next verse. We are reading to verse 8. And this shall be a sign from the Lord. That what you now hear is more superior than what you had before. Because the both for and against me came from God. So why, which one should I believe? Remember. Thus saith the Lord before came from God. Thus saith the Lord now also came from God. You have kept me in limbo. And God is saying, I will give you a sign. To show you which is superior. Please go back. Verse 7. Verse 7. That the Lord will do this thing that he has spoken. Which one? Which one didn't he speak? Verse 8. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, which is gone down in the sun, this and that and that, backwards. So the sun returned 10 degrees, by which degrees it was gone down. He gave him a sign. So by the time the guy saw the sun going down, he said, ah, this sign was tied to the second prophecy. And based on it, I know now, and I have confidence that something I have done 
has made God to override the first prophecy. There is now, let me tell you some interesting things here. Number one, God never admitted he made a mistake. So it was not a mistake. God is, ah, sorry, is it you? Uh, 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 Isaiah, you know how busy I am. I have to speak to this and that. No. God acted as if he didn't talk before. L listen to this. He would have said, okay, go back and say, it's okay, it's okay. No, you don't need to cry. I'm God. Am I still not your father? He just changed as if he's not the one. Imagine if you were that prophet. It's as if God just denied you now and left you in trouble. Imagine if Isaiah came to your church. If um, who? Hezekiah came to your church. Miracle service. And you now prophesied. And said, this is what I see. Oh. The same way it moved from positive to negative. I can also stand in the name of the Lord and prophesy to you that by next week, five of you will be in America. And by next week, one person is in jail. The other person is in the hospital. And you will come back and say, Mr. Man, come and arrest this man because he is fake. Between the first prophecy and the second prophecy, man did something. Listen to me very carefully. Between the first speaking of God and what he changed, man did something. That means between a positive prophecy and a negative one that happens, there is man in between that does something that can turn prophecy. Please listen to me and learn this. All personal prophecies, write it down please. All personal prophecies spoken by any servant of God. All. All personal prophecies spoken by any servant of God have conditions that must be adhered to for their actualization. All prophecies. There is no prophecy spoken by any man of God on earth that happens on his own. Are we together? Listen. The prophecy of scripture is a revelation of of the preset principles of God that has already been attached to his speakings. Notice, notice how the construction of scripture is. For every speaking of God, there is a condition. Are you seeing that now? The moment you satisfy that condition, there are some of them you don't even have to pray. The moment you satisfy that condition, it happens. Are we together now? Look at this. I don't need to speak to your ground, your farm, and say in the name of Jesus, except I'm not a man of God. Corn, you must come out this year. No. Already a word had been sent while the earth remains. Seed time and harvest. That means if I never sow, I will not know whether that word is still valid or not. So my sowing gives the word an opportunity to prove itself and then it grows. That the word of God is more sure because already for everything God says, the principle to actualize it has been added. As a man of God, I can receive prophecy for you and not be able to be aligned enough to receive the principle that makes that prophecy come to pass. I can tell you God is going to lift you, but the limitation of my prophetic reception does not allow me to tell you what you must do to make that prophecy come to pass. So I just tell you, this is what I see. You are great. The word of God says, this is what you must do. You are great too. Choose which of the two. That if you never meet a physical man who speaks to you, you can go to Jesus the prophet. I am the way, the truth, and life. Jesus the prophet 
and look at a scripture and lift that scripture as Jesus speaking to you and say, Jesus, I hear you. I've heard you say to me that it shall come to pass if I diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to observe and do all that you command me this day that you will set me on high above all the nations of the earth and that these blessings will come upon me and overtake me. There is no witch in hell. Hear me. If you prophesy to me and say, Apostle, I see failure. You are not wrong. But I, have, I know that there is a more sure word of prophecy. For as long as I walk in keeping with what Jesus the prophet said, there is no divination and there is no enchantment from the pit of hell that can override the authority. In the cater of authority, the prophecy of scripture stands superior to any human prophecy. Men of God and women of God are gradually pushing prophecy outside of the jurisdiction of its relevance. And members are today becoming slaves to men and women of God. A man seems to be able to own the souls of people because you can just speak to anybody anyhow. And they go back saying, this one has spoken. Apostle Joshua Selman has spoken. No. Prophecies can fail to the negative or to the positive. I can speak to you and say God will bless you. You will eat well. Don't obey the principles of scripture that make for increase and you will be surprised. When men say there is a casting down, you will join them and say there is a casting down. Why? Because you violated the principle. There is no truth of scripture salvation is the freest thing we know and the condition is that if thou shall believe with thy heart talk to me koinonia and thou shall confess with your mouth that means you can stand around a preacher and he can preach a powerful sermon and you will still go to hell you had the word but you still went to hell this action part this condition part is why many prophecies fail. The prophet spoke in scripture that a virgin shall be with child. He didn't say a virgin called Mary. He said a virgin. There were many women who qualified for that prophecy. But one woman aligned herself enough. So the angel came to say, Madam, we have found you favored. And I've taught you that favor does not happen automatically. Mary was understudied from heaven. There were many other ladies. But heaven looked at Mary. Does she sustain? Please help them. Does she sustain the character? Will Mary be able to stand the embarrassment of getting pregnant from a ghost? The way Mary is, if pressure is too much, are you sure she's not going to corner Joseph and run away? Is this woman... Is she liable to receiving a bribe from a rabbi? Mary was not just favored. She was studied. Her alignment was making her partner with prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And then the angel came back and said, Mary, we have found you favored. And the favor is that based on our examination, you are the most fit person among the virgins here to carry Jesus. She said, well... Um, I don't want to abort prophecy. How shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. And then the angel explained that, okay, this is what will happen. You will not need to meet a man. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. Your stomach will just start bulging out. Don't find it strange. Don't do anything. Don't shout. Don't worry. It's okay. And she said, be it unto me. Be the word unto me. I received the word. Be it unto me according to your word. Mary would have sat down and said, no, this deal is not fair. The ghost has to come with you and explain to me. And let me understand if I see him and I think he's really a spirit and that. Do you know it would have delayed the birth of Jesus? Heaven would have had to now go back and start looking for another person again. 
Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is very powerful. So God has spoken great things over our lives. Many of us received the word. We didn't receive the conditions. We left the conditions on the ground. When we fell down, we got up, we received the word. But we left the conditions. As a result, our lives are a shadow of what God said should be. Because we received the word, but did not receive the conditions. The angel comes and tells Joshua that this city will be defeated. But then he gives him the conditions immediately. And demands that the conditions be adhered to in total. So he began to go around Jericho once every day. The seventh day he went seven times and they shouted. And prophecy came to pass. There is no prophecy that happens on his own. There are few prophecies in the Bible that are called written judgments. There are verdicts already that have been declared. One of it is the eternal doom of Lucifer. There is no prayer retreat that will happen to beg God to change his mind about the condition of Satan. So if you have a dream and you see Satan coming back in heaven to join the seraphs, you know straight up that you are under attack because based on the truth of scripture written, it's a written judgment. Are we together? Another written judgment, the eternal doom of those who reject Christ, the antichrist and his cohorts, these things are written. The only thing you can do is to exempt yourself from it, but you cannot stop it. Number three, the reality of causes and yokes on earth is written. Ordinances were intentionally put. The only thing you can, you can't stop causes on the earth. No, they are there. The only thing you can do is exempt yourself from it. You can say minus me and my family, but to say minus it out of the earth, no sir, it is not given to you. You can cast out demons from your life, from a church, from your vicinity, but not from the earth. There is nobody who will stand and gather all the demons on earth because he said, I behold, I give you power. Remember scripture, power. So I have that authority. I've been risen with Christ above all thrones, dominions, and every name that is named. You gather all the demons in one place, catch them, and let there be peace on earth. No, that does not happen. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yes. The number one reason why prophecies do not come to pass is because people receive the word but do not receive the condition. The condition for actualizing the prophecies. The other side of this is that you can change any prophecy. Write it down, please. Don't let anybody tell you there are prophetic words that will not change and cannot change. That is against the character of scripture. The Bible shows us again and again that it is within the power of a believer. Shabrakatos kapadia. To change prophecies. That means if your father looks at you and says you are cursed. You are a foolish and stupid son. I know a woman. Years ago when I was in secondary school. There was a woman who was tired of her son stealing. She will make her little money. And this naughty boy will come and carry. Continue to fish the money out of the, the mother's wallet. And one day she was angry. And she looked at him and cursed him. She said he will stop stealing only when rats stop stealing. Let me tell you, this guy, as soon as he's going out of the cell, he won't reach two weeks, he's back again. They know him, they just open the door, there's nothing to ask. What happened? Mm -mm. Just walk in, we know. Do you think that boy does not have a way out? Imagine that that boy is in a place where he never meets a man who can speak to him. Is there hope for that boy? Yes, sir. There is Jesus the prophet. That he can look at it. That even the lawful captives, is it in your Bible? A more sure word of prophecy, even the lawful captives can be delivered. So you can find this truth 
and believe it. But you just get up and say, wow, I found it. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I'm delivered. Hallelujah. You are not delivered. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You are only informed about deliverance that is possible. Are you seeing how we mock ourselves? We just find it out. Oh, I receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm done. And right after them, you will see what they say should happen. Happen. There are conditions. What made the captive lawfully captive? And what is the condition for that person to be delivered? The biggest hit of this prophetic inaccuracy is in the area of financial prosperity. Many poor people in the church today, the years they have spent waiting for prophecy is the same time they would have activated the blessings of God upon their lives. They have sat down lazily and carelessly and some foolishly waiting for a prophetic word by an accurate man. And members continue to harass men of God around and say, you have spoken, it's not working. I bless you. I bless you. You are correct. But you go and read and study everything the Bible says about the blessing. How it works and how it is activated. And you'll find out that many people are hoping in futility. It's true. Charismatics. This is where charismatics have failed. The excitement that comes with revelation has swallowed up the need for compliance. People just jump here and there. Things will happen. He shall keep the imperfect peace. Yes. And no evil shall come nigh thy dwelling. You go and look for trouble and see what happens. It will look as if angels are no longer there. So what have you, I, I get what I'm saying now. Yes. You can choose to end your life now, today, right now. You go and stand, you go and stand on the road. Let me be prophesying. In Jesus' name, you will live long. I stand under the oil God has given me. While you stroll foolishly, you use your will that is more powerful. That's the same will that brought Jesus into your heart. Jesus stood at the gate of your heart and would not enter until that will let him in. And you stand in front of a door and a truck. The spirit of death is an opportunist. He looks for a scenario that makes his ministry possible. So he's scouting around Zaria and here he finds someone about to stand near a T-junction. Carelessly. He will heighten the drunkenness of the driver and with speed, he will not see you. He will come and clear you. You are dead. Now, resurrection is a different law altogether. We can now start, but as far as that scene is concerned, you are dead. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something that happened to a young man. I'm sure he may be listening or maybe he's here. It's a big mistake that the boy made. He had some carryovers and um, he saw me in a dream, <laughs> according to him. I appeared in a dream and I told him, I said, everything is all right. Now, watch this now. Everything is all right. Very consistent with what God will say. <laughs> Are we together? The same way God looks at the poor and says, let the poor say, I am rich. They said, I am rich till they became old. Nothing happened. And then the gentleman got up and didn't even do anything. He refused to take the carryovers, refused to do anything, and he just sat down and he called me and was sending text messages and was telling me, look, I'm not trying to jeer the gentleman. No, not at all. I'm just trying to use it to correct. Now, you see, that word was at the mercy of a condition. Are we together now? Is it not when your lecturer sees your script? Now, you have done your own part to at least write. The Spirit of God can now move upon that man to show you mercy. Mercy is not possible now because the condition to activate the mercy was not granted. The same way the Bible says that you will build houses and you keep looking at your land, that house will not be built. Someone will look at you and say, speak to me. Say, I, I, the same thing I told you last year is what God is showing me again. The day you take a step of faith and you buy sharp sand, one tipper, and pour there by faith, what happens? That's your five loaf 
and two fish. You are ready for a miracle. A destiny helper can now come and say, what's going on here? Say, I'm, I'm starting life. I'm pushing this thing by faith. Say, really, come to my office tomorrow. Now, your obedience has allowed prophecy to find expression. Are we together? Yes. Your marriage shall be a blessing. Your children surround your table. You will see your children's children. You are a bad gentleman and you are a bad lady. God will never, that prophecy will never come to pass. Are, are you getting what I'm saying now? There are many guys that just cross their legs. I saw myself. I saw my children. I saw a jeep here. I saw a resort center here. You are dreaming. Let me tell you this. Prophecy will never come to pass because God demands diligence and productivity for wealth to happen. You have ignored that law. And so that prophecy will never come to pass. Are we together? Your marriage will be a blessing if you know what it takes for a husband and a wife to live together. If the only thing you take to your marriage is prophecy, you are in trouble. You must take understanding. You must take what? Understanding. So that when your wife shouts and says, I hate you, I hate you, I hate the day I married you, you just know that she doesn't mean what she's saying. If you carry that, that straight line, prophetic thinking and slap her, that's the end of that marriage. In spite of the fact that the Bible says you will see your children's children. Prophecies can fail. When men do not satisfy the conditions that make for the actualization of that prophecy, it will fail. The same way negative prophecies can be averted. I've told you, I've shared this with you once and again that people continue, you know, here and there, people can have dreams about me over trips that I'm taking, whether by road or by air, and they can send a text and say, Apostle, I got up, I saw a very dangerous dream. Very dangerous dream. And this is it. And I saw a ghastly motor accident or I saw a plane crash and you are there. Now, they are not fake, truly. It may be that that's the plot of the enemy. It would be stupid for me to think Satan is going on break for me. No. There are many people who think the devil is attacking them. The devil is not attacking them. Do you know what it takes for Satan to attack you? You to be honest, if you were Satan, will you attack everybody? It's not strategic. What have you done that justifies being attacked? The level of investment you think Satan is making on you is, is, is flattery. Most of what we are getting is the inertia of prophecy. Just sitting on your life and not moving. Because you have refused to do something about it. Take Satan out of the earth. People's condition will only improve a little. Only do what? Improve a little. You will be surprised. You will think if Satan is taken out of the earth, suddenly the poor will be rich. Suddenly, you. In fact, let me tell you, there are many people who that God uses the way the devil pushes them to help them understand God. You will be surprised to see that some people's situation will be worse when Satan is out. Because there's no basis for pain again to bring conviction. Some of you right now are sitting down waiting for prophecies to happen by themselves. Some of our parents received prophecies since 1980, 1970 till today. That prophecy has not come to pass. And we continue to carry disappointment in our hearts. I am showing you right now, listen very carefully, that more than the speakings of any man, you must find a place there are many men of God who people will look and say, I see a grace on you. Say, yes, sir, I, somebody has told me before, confirmation. I see that you will be a powerful man of God. Yes, sir. I'm seeing like Reinhard Bonke. I see Reinhard Bonke. The other one said that you will never be like Reinhard. Do you know what Reinhard Bonke did to be Reinhard Bonke? Talk about the times of prayer. Talk about the times of fasting. Listen to me. Talk about the times of engaging the world. Talk about the disciplines that it takes to host God's power. You ignore that there is no Reinhard Bonke for you. The worst, in fact, let me even take it a step further before we pray. The worst one is that hands were laid on you when prophecies came. 
and you just believe that because hands were laid and I fell down, I got up with conditions satisfied automatically. No, you were engraced by that falling. The real anointing for the result has not yet been given. That anointing for the result is waiting when your obedience is complete. That's when it comes on you. The anointing you received, I'm telling you, is the grace to walk in keeping with the conditions that bring that prophecy. Are we together? It's a simple message, but it will work wonders in your life. You will call your brother very quickly and say, sir, please come. I already know that this your journey is heading nowhere. Just sit down. Let us discuss. Why is this family like this? He said, don't worry. Prophecy just came last week. And you will know who to drive away from your house respectfully. By the time he comes again, singing all kinds of songs and saying, it does not work, Abi, let's walk again. Bring 200,000. Bring one chicken bring one bag of rice and then success will imaginarily happen no sir whether a man is fake or real the result in your life will be the same if you don't engage it did you hear what i said whether a prophet is fake or a prophet is real once there is no engaging the conditions that make for actualizing that prophecy your result i guarantee you will be the same it's why many people don't go to church. They went to a herbalist and the herbalist prophesied to them. And then they got born again and went to a real man of God. He prophesied to them. The result was the same, zero. And they said, I don't, there's no difference. There will not be difference because the defining factor is not God, not the prophets, but you, the recipient of that prophecy. If God tells you you are going to marry a multimillionaire, what are you supposed to do? Thanksgiving. Yes, Thanksgiving. But what, what do you do else where you finish Thanksgiving? You go back and start saying, God, help me. A millionaire means many people will hate him. A millionaire means that he may not have time to rest. A wise person begins to war with prophecy. You, God tells you now you will be a millionaire. How do you behave? Buy new clothes. No, sir. That's not how to conform to prophecy. You go back and follow them who through faith and patience. Once you don't see faith and patience, don't follow them. Even if you see the promise, you must see faith and patience to qualify followership. Anybody you see the promise and you don't see faith, meaning there must be a God equation in their life. There must be something in their equation that forces them to need God. Are we blessed? There are many things today that God has brought this ministry into that God did not directly prophesy to me. I'm not one of those men of God that will lie to you that everything we're seeing is what God... Mm -hmm. There are things God did not tell me. I went to the word, Jesus, the prophet. I looked at the truths of scripture. I understood the truths of scripture. And I saw the conditions attached to it. Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I read and studied how Jesus increased in ministry. Jesus increased in ministry because he first increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. That means for anything to increase around you, something must increase within you. That's a revelation. So I don't move around with the brain of 50 members. And the prayer request of 5,000 members. It doesn't work that way. I must upgrade myself spiritually, intellectually, to be able to host the kind of increase that I trust God to bring. We only know that a crowd came to Jesus. But Jesus grew. At age 12, when his mates were running around, Jesus was at the temple learning. Learning. Are we together? There were a few times in scripture where we saw Jesus around feasts. There were a few times in scripture where we saw Jesus just enjoying himself. That's the portrait of a serious man of God. You, God has called you into ministry. Every movie that comes out, you must see it and watch it. It's alright if you are called into the movie ministry. 
but if you are called into the world ministry with power and signs and wonders that's too much luxury to host the anointing are we together listen let me tell you this sincerely i i tell you the truth as a man of god i stand from the standpoint of the knowledge that god has given me and i look at many people and respectfully i can tell you there are people that results are far from them i hate to be a bearer of bad news but even when people stand for me to pray for them i know that what i'm i'm doing is not the final solution to that problem and it is painful as a man of god not many people will tell you this truth because sometimes you see men of god who are victims of manipulating the ignorance of people the ignorance of people can be used to the advantage of the man of god there are times that people stand with seeds here sincerely and i look at them and they say apostle i just emptied my account and my heart is bleeding what is this for now he say, apostle i know things can turn around in my family i know the answer is yes and no yes a breakthrough can come but sustainable financial open doors no sir there are truths you must learn so i tell the person okay go and get koinonia teachings there and sometimes as i'm talking to them they start shaking the moment they fall they stand up and just laugh you see some of them calling their loved ones it's done no it's not exactly done honestly you see let me tell you something brothers and sisters you must you must you must love god and love people to be dishonest there are very successful people in this ministry in business career and so on and so forth every one of them can tell you the different units the different dimensions that construct themselves together to spell success were adhered to where the prophetic was needed they opened themselves to that dimension where prayer was needed they opened themselves where diligence was needed they opened themselves like the ingredients of a, of a meal everything was combined together to equal success this is what i'm teaching you handing over the responsibility of your destiny to the prophetic alone as the ultimate determinant of your success and not staying with the word of god to understand the conditions will end you in futility and in pain there were many things that i did not see in my life in spite of the prophetic words i kept receiving I had to study prophecy and say look i have to look at this thing and examine it very carefully and i began to find out if thou shalt diligently deuteronomy 28 please give it to us deuteronomy 28 if thou shalt diligently hearken look up please this is prophecy the correct approach to prophecy and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god to what observe and to faith is not just hearing what god has said faith is doing what god says should be done to see that result when the rich man came to jesus he said good master what must i do to be saved apostle the devourer is coming every time i can't hold 10 naira like this it's as if there's a bag now let me tell you this I can stand as a man of God. Please watch this. We're going to pray shortly. I can stand as a man of God and God can show me a revelation. I can look at, for instance, come Sam. It's looking sharp and smart. Now watch this. You see how sharp and smart Sam is looking. Imagine that God opens my eyes. Now the way prophetic things are interpreted, you have to be spiritual and be grounded in the word to interpret them properly. Because God will open my eyes now. Do you know what I will see? I will see this. I will see Sam holding a basket. And I will see water being poured in that basket and going down. That can be a template that God is showing me. To mean that there is loss and wastage in his life are we together now so he uses because god speaks in pictures the bible calls it similitudes it is not only words god speaks in pictures so when i see that now watch this i can say ah sam all that i see your finance is going down you say yes it's true everything going down you say yes 
you don't cover that basket just with a prophetic word. No. Remember the going down of the finances is a product of many decisions that he is taking. So the real captivity is the financial decisions. His understanding about God's methodologies as far as increase is concerned. That affects and influences the decisions he's taking. That now authorizes this opportunist called the devourer to destroy him. So to really help Sam, after prophesying to him, I'll say, Sam, I need to show you the conditions provided for by scripture to stabilize your finance. Number one, let's look at the spiritual laws you are breaking. Number two, let's look at the understanding. Let's look at what you are doing. You are not producing anything. You are not, you are not diligent. You are not exchanging anything for value. Number two, your reputation is making you to make bad decisions that are above and beyond your financial level. Now, you are closing that door permanently. Remember that knowledge and wisdom are stabilizers of destiny. When Sam goes back now, number one, he will pray and rebuke that spirit. But number two, he has now received a dimension of intelligence that teaches him that patience is godly. Are we together? That teaches him that it is all right to move small in life. If all you have is a shoe of 300 naira, it is not a mockery on your reputation. An understanding you had before called it shame. What you have now received calls it process. Because of that now, when the devourer comes as usual, a fortification has been built through knowledge. Now the prophecy of Sam, God is changing your life, can now happen. Because favor can now come. A system of preservation has come. This is how Sam is warring with this prophecy. Otherwise, Sam can kneel down and say, yes, sir, I will speak to him. The destiny helper will come and pour the same water into the same basket. So here's what happens in church. And I say this to churches and ministries like ours here that are apostolic and prophetic because many times we have little value for the exegesis of the word. Bringing understanding to the saints, bringing illumination because of the charismatism around the demonstration of the spirit and the prophetic. Many times we, we feel embarrassed even as, ma as men of God to settle down and mature believers through the teaching of the word. We would prefer... To just begin to move. Imagine that I, I, I come here now and the power of God begins to break out. I mean, it's easy for you to see that this is that Joshua Selman. You know, the Bible said this is that. So when you bring a visitor, you say, I told you. It will reach 10 minutes. When he comes up, you'll be flying. I, you doubted me. Now you see it happening. But sometimes when you sit down, you see the way believers are embarrassed and ashamed. When the word of God is taught you, you see that each I need something. When someone shouts, they start laughing. You know, it just it's like it just eases up because many people do not want to grow. We have taught that prophecy is a shortcut to destiny. No, prophecy is part of the requirements. Listen very carefully. It's part of the systems that were put by the wisdom of God for the building of the saints. Prophecy was not designed to replace obedience to God's set order. If I give you a book and I say study this book on church growth and success and leadership and administration, chances are you are going to throw that book away. If I say come to me and I will receive just one touch. How many touches? One. One touch, you go back, your cathedral will enter another dimension. That prophecy will work if you have prepared your way like Dotham before you come. Dotham prepared his way before the Lord. If you have prepared your way, you have done your assignment. Oh, with, with Jesus' joy, that oil will come and set your life in order. Before the fire came, there was already a sacrifice prepared already. The fire would not come. The fire cannot come and be hanging in the air and say, oh, you have quickly prepared the sacrifice. You prepare the sacrifice first. There are some of you, the prophecy on your life requires a requisite level of transformation for it to come. And since your rate of change is slow, it will take a long time 
so when you say god help me god says i'm i'm ready to do it today if you will change to that dimension what do you understand about pastoring thousands of people what do you understand about the diplomacy of conflict management? What do you understand about leadership and administration? What do you understand about finance? What do you understand about impact and influence? What do you understand about preparing sermons? What do you understand about, about giving people an expression, growth? Just anoint me, oh God, don't worry about anything. Let me tell you what you will. You will produce a place with so many miracles that will depend on you. They will never be able to rise. This is the tragedy of the prophetic and the apostolic ministry. If I speak to you, Sam, and by tomorrow, someone gives Sam a house, a car, do you think next week Sam will come for Koinonia with speed? Sam will not even sit down there. He will sit down on the altar. Are you seeing that now? And then, the day, let's assume that this is a branch church. The day they now want to transfer me to go to the US, what do you think God will be telling Sam at that point? Sam will almost die that he had God. No. The emotional connect that comes by reason of the breakthrough he received through my life has made my voice look like the voice of God to him. And most often than not, God did not speak and tell him to go anywhere. He just examined the other replacement they brought. And the lazy nature of the man greeted the congregation. I said, no, I won't sit under this grace. Not at this strategic point of my life. And then... He will get up and now begin to travel and go and meet me in the U.S. This guy's destiny has been wrongly attached to me. Are you seeing that now? To the point that this man can never know God by himself. Because the definition of Christianity and breakthrough as proposed by me is that if you do not receive a prophetic word from me, you are grounded, you are dead, you are finished. My name is Joshua Selman, and I'm telling you it's a lie. If you take the word of God and believe it and walk within the principles that are kept in the word, I repeat to you that no divination and no enchantment. If you are reading the word properly, there are places in the word that will lead you to go and look for men to pray for you. So you don't have to be afraid of being in error. Are we together? I continue to watch with frustration, sincerely speaking. As prophecies continue to be aborted in the lives of people. And they blame men of God and continue to make negative prophecies to come to pass in their lives. I told you respectfully so, that in my entire paternal lineage sincerely i think aside from my dad by the grace of god i'm the most successful person entire draw the line from anywhere till this can you imagine that kind of thing i saw the spirit of failure and poverty and hardship in my family you can be the greatest of anything but live long enough, you must be the least. When I saw it, number one, I didn't deny it. I knew that the, if you deny it, that's another delay you are causing for yourself. The quicker you admitted it, the, the better for you. Just sit down, look at it and say, ah, okay, this is it. I see that there is problem here. But I made up my mind. I love the word of God. I found it too. I found it. See, I have set thee above thrones, dominions, above all of these things, every name that is named. I started seeing something here. Jesus, the prophet, started speaking to my destiny. And I had the foolishness to believe him. The childlikeness to believe him. I believed him so much so that I disbelieved every other thing I saw. 
And then the Holy Spirit guided me enough to know what are the conditions. What does it take to actualize this? And then he began to show me step by step. And I said, it may be painful, oh God. I may not be able to go through this myself, but supply the grace. And he says, my strength is perfected in your weakness. Look what he has done today. Apostle is lucky. They pri I remember when they were prophesying that day. Was it not two of us? They prophesied over everybody in a meeting. That's what many people say. That's what many parents say. They look at many great men of God and say, Ah, this guy, I, he was just lucky. I knew the meeting he got born again. The same altar call was made for everybody. One person responded, another person wished. Please make up your mind. Extraordinary fruitfulness will remain a dream. Did you hear what I said? There are people who are engaging with understanding and the results are showing. Extraordinary fruitfulness is not just it. Will, December will come and for many people they will find out that nothing like extraordinary fruitfulness happened. But if someone makes up his mind like Timothy that I'm going to war a good warfare. Prophecy has been sent ahead of me. Lord, what do I need to do? Show me. Your greatest prayer in this season can be, is not just show me your ways. Lord, show me the part I have to play. Show me. What do I have to do, oh God, to change my financial story? I've desired fresh oil. I have fasted and I have prayed. What is the key? To the anointing what is the key to a mighty supply of the spirit upon a man i found out the key to keep the holy spirit close to a man because i knew that the nature of the ministry that god had committed to me would require a depth of intimacy and i didn't want theory lord show me what keeps the Holy Spirit close to a man? Think of the risk that happens when he becomes far from you. And don't let nobody lie to you that he cannot be far from you. No. Huh. Spirit of the living God. I found him as the secret that he is an ever-present help in time of need. But what do I need to do as the recipient? Thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. Let me tell you this. I trust God's way. One of the secrets of my life is that I trust the way of God. Most of us have allowed education, intellect, to corrupt the potency of the ways of God. I believe God. I believe God. I remember when the Lord gave instructions here for miracle service. Foolishly and childishly. And did it. Everything he says to do, you do. When God declares anything here, we go after him foolishly. I remember Jimmy here, he would tell you. When the Lord said to put some of the koinonia messages online, audio. Audio message that is not very clear. People online, those of you who are social media experts know that people cannot spend two hours listening to something. They don't have that time. You break it into sections. And someone sits down for two hours, 30 minutes, listening to volumes and volumes of a message. My brothers and my sisters, it is not. Let me tell you, you, you will be shocked at the power of God that is released and the energy that prophecy carries when you align with it. Show me a man who has received a word from a prophet of God or has received a word from scripture and obtained grace from God to understand the requirements and do it. I show you a man who you're speaking against, you're cursing against, you're wishing against. is a waste of time. My confidence today in life and in ministry is on my determination to keep doing the things that allow to host the presence of God.
My confidence today is to keep doing the things that continue to bring increase in my life and in the ministry. That way you can stand and beat your chest under God and know you have entered your Sabbath. Satan can come. Challenges can come. But you are as assured of victory as you are assured of Christ sitting on his throne. My life has no fear. I sincerely mean it because I have found out. I found how to commit God. You commit God in the affairs of your life by obtaining grace to know what to do. Jesus himself knew what to do. Buy the ingredients for jollof rice and bring somebody who does not know how to mix them. You have potential for rice. That's prophecy. But that rice will never, never be prepared there. At best, you are going to have nonsense prepared at rice. But then bring somebody who has taken out time to learn how to prepare rice and then bring the ingredients. And within a short time, as short as an hour, you will see a delicious pot or plate of rice. God is not withholding financial blessings from you. The word has come. If nobody ever spoke it to you, scripture has already told you. God is not withholding increase and influence from you. Something about your not understanding his ways may be responsible. The irresponsibility of allowing prophecy work itself, thinking it is spiritual, is very dangerous. From the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. But when Jesus walked upon the earth, they tried to distract him. And he said, no, 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 no. My meat is to do the will of him that has sent me. Jesus had an option to abort salvation. When he was at Gethsemane, he cried and prayed. Can you take this cup off me? But he said, nevertheless, my will, not my will, but yours be done. And when he took that cross, it was not an angel carrying it. He was carrying it, feeling the weight. The moment he wanted to throw it, he remembered. He remembered. Man will not be grafted through me to be seated. I, 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 if I throw this now, I cannot call many sons to glory. Let me tell you this and I confess to you. There were times in my life when I would be walking through the night and sometimes I would just stop and a joy of the spirit will come over me. Because I saw the days coming. I knew that there were days of joy and rest. And no pain at that point sustained an ability to interrupt my focus. I knew. I was trying to know the Holy Spirit. Knowing the Holy Spirit is hard. Sometimes you want to sleep and he will just tell you to stroll. You will think you are going to pray for one hour. And you will just return to six in the morning. It's the price. While I am doing that, someone is seen in a vision that a young man is going to arise from the north and he will carry the word and the life and the power of Jesus. That prophecy can remain in the realm of the spirit when you do not partner with prophecy. Is God speaking? What have you not done that is making prophecy to not manifest in your life? What have you done to allow a negative prophecy come to pass in your life? Something was said. You saw it in a dream. That the devil wants to oppress you. You saw it in a dream. That an attack was coming to you and your children. You just got up and, and wrote it down. Usually that's what we do. I had a dream. 3.22 a.m. In that dream. I saw knife. I saw all of that. And you didn't do anything about it. Until six months after that time. Watch this. It will not come as a physical robber. Your prayer life goes down. Your finances goes down. All helpers leave you. What was working stops working. That was the dream. Prophecy seeking expression in your life. Like Hezekiah, there's something you would have done about it. Hey, everybody in this house, turn every plate upside down. I have seen something that is an evil and we can stay the power away. And then you get up and pray. There are many things I see 
that the devil wants to bring upon people, upon the ministry, upon my life. There are people who send me text messages sometimes, Apostle, this is what I've seen. Pray about the ministry. I don't sit down and cross my legs. While you are sleeping and snoring, I'm awake with God, crying and praying. Lord, worship team. Lord, prayer department. Lord, this, there must be increase. People are coming. You are opening up doors. Prophecy. And you say, I saw it too. I saw that by this time, koinonia would have increased. Yes, you saw it, but it was engaged. Is someone getting the teaching this night? Because we are going to pray. You will never see the outstretched arm of God with the assumption that prophecy will work itself out. No. You have a dream and you see people dying in your family. That means there is a word that is bringing death. What do you do about it? You don't wait till somebody dies. Say, ah! And you know, I, I, the other day I told you, you are a witness. What kind of witness is that? You can get up and fast. Fasting is powerful, oh. Yes, listen to me. Our, our Ajebo generation, fasting is important for a man's destiny. You will never be able to do business with God. If you cannot turn your plates upside down. There are times you need to sit like Elijah. You write the list of all the nonsense you saw that must change. One by one you are praying. What is this I saw about my wife? What is this I saw about my husband? What is this I saw about my business? I saw an attack. I, I'm sleeping and all of a sudden I have a dream. And in that dream I see chains everywhere. In that dream I see people crying. You don't need an interpretation. The character of scripture shows you that mourning is not associated with glory. So already let the Bible interpret that for you that is trouble. You can call somebody. I pray that you have a good friend. That when you need to change prophecy he will be available with you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That you have a good friend that you say, please, can you stay awake for three hours with me today? I'm sensing the spirit of death over my family. I don't know, but I've been sensing it. And the person says, ah, you know, coincidentally, I had a dream of death. It shouldn't put fear. Your consolation is that the most sure word of prophecy has an ability to superimpose everything planned. And you can get up in the night and agree. And both of you are praying. How do you pray? You engage the truth of scripture. You don't pray and say, God, why now? Where are you? Is it that are you still there? That, that's not prayer. That's just lamentation. You begin to pray when you engage the truth of God's word. I choose life. I'm the head of this home. My children may be too small to choose life, but I stand as a covering. I choose life. When they are in school, I choose life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? I've taught you this thing. Listen, if you are married in this place, young or old, you are a man. If you don't go around praying and laying hands on your children, you are not a very good ambassador of this ministry. The children should be sleeping. Don't go, you are not a father because they serve you plate and you are sitting now. You get up and carry that regalia of priesthood. You are changing negative prophecies. Your child comes back with a result from second position to twelfth. The other one from 4 to 18. You don't just flog them. No. Psalm 112. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord. This is prophecy now. That delighted greatly in his commands. His seed shall be mighty. This is not might. Lord, you have said my seed shall be mighty. Shekakoska. Manda prakato selekata. While you are speaking that word, there are powers, let me tell you, that reside in the heavenlies. You speak and command your morning. He told Job, has thou commanded thy morning? You, are, you, are, you sleep and wake up with a dream. Someone injects you with HIV and tells you this is HIV. You get up and say, and you know, I'm feeling the spot. You get up and see marks on your body. Physical marks from a dream. And you sit down and just laugh. Laugh? No matter how mad a man is, he does not enter fire by mistake. As mad as he is, he comes near fire, he will move. I'm not that mad. 
We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind. We want to dwell under the shadow of your wings. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind. We want to dwell under the shadow of your wings. Over every challenge in my life, blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Blow, blow, say, blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Listen, everything you see in your dream is prophecy, seeking manifestation, good or bad. Everything you see in your dream, in your vision is a prophecy. Seeking manifestation. You can allow it, you can change it, you can stop it. Inaction is a disaster to a believer. It's what you don't want that you will see happen. Can you open your mouth in one minute and just blast in the spirit? Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Please look at me. One of the demands of priesthood, get my message on priesthood, is that men become men of prayer. Not just prayer in terms of petition, but legislators of spiritual reality. Anything you sit and watch will happen. Did you hear what I said? Listen. There was no record of Job praying for himself. There was no record of any man praying for Job. The devil came through him and through his covering to afflict his family. He prayed for his children. It's true that he feared God. It's true that he ensured evil. But that's not the seed for deliverance. You must know how to pray and engage. Listen, let me tell you. Let the devil get used to you not keeping quiet when negative things come. Don't say I'm not a member of prayer band. I'm not a member of this and that. The times that we live in, let me tell you, it requires men with the spirit of Issachar. It's a man who had an understanding of the times. Otherwise, you can confess, I shall not die. And death will sweep you like a chicken. You must have the eyes that see. Lift your voice and begin to pray. I change everything that is not consistent with the counsel of God concerning my life, my family, my finances. Please pray, pray. I change everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Every prophecy that is not of God seeking manifestation through my life, I reject you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I reject you. I speak the word. The most sure word of prophecy. I shall not die, but leave the head, not the tail, above only, not beneath. Pray.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. I'd like you to find someone to agree with you. Everything God said or you have seen in the spirit that is consistent with God's will and has been hanging by any power of divination within the second heavens. Lift your voice and cry. I command that it must come to pass. I wore a good warfare in the realm of the spirit. I decree and I declare the joy, the peace, the prosperity, the blessings, the anointing upon my ministry, upon my life. I declare the powers of the heavens holding everything that belongs to me I command the release by the power of the word of God pray few minutes and we're done you are enforcing prophecy Hallelujah. Matthew 18, 18, please. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. shall be bound in heaven whatsoever thou shall lose binding and losing thoughts of allowing and disallowing are we together now please listen to me please listen listen that everything that belongs to me and has been held by any power it must be released now not tomorrow now lift your voice and begin to pray Koinonia, pray. Pray prophecy to manifestation. Pray prophecy to manifestation. I command the relief in the name of Jesus Christ. He paroto shata lekata rakata barakato sekete. Hallelujah. 
Alléluia. 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 Last prayer, and we are done tonight. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, Him I will trust. Continue, please. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. 4. He shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Five. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that wasted or flyeth by day. Listen very carefully. Look at what the Bible is writing here. Next verse. Six. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. Seven, a thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand by thy right side. It shall not come nigh thee. Eight, only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Listen, that means every time you hear of negative things, someone is dying, they are kidnapping someone, this is happening. In as much as you sympathize with people, you don't do them at the detriment of your own conviction. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? If Joshua Selman dies today, it does not mean that the truth of scripture giving life is a lie. So in as much as you sympathize with people, do it lovingly, but not at the detriment of the immutability of God's counsel. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. until you rise up to possess your possession, you will never, never possess your possession. Jesus was in the wilderness praying and fasting for 40 days. Satan came to tempt him. When he defeated him, he returned in the power of the spirit and his fame went abroad. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. I hate to be the bearer of bad news but there are controlling powers that continue to see that negative prophecies continue to be enforced in our lives and until the saints understand how to legislate by the spirit we will continue to be victims of the speakings of men last prayer father every prophetic word that came through your word or through your servant upon my life this year i stand in partnership i call it maranatha let that prophecy manifest in my life lift your voice and pray the conditions to make it happen i obtain grace to understand i obtain grace to walk in keeping with it pray every prophetic word about my spiritual life, about my finances, about my marriage, about fruitfulness, I receive by the Spirit. I obtain grace. I obtain understanding. I obtain grace. I obtain understanding to know what to do, to know how to partner with prophecy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one testimony and we'll round up tonight. A gentleman sent me a text and he said he was tired of what was happening to him and his family. 
you know what people call failure at the edge of breakthrough that you see good things but just when your hand is about to obtain it trouble must ferment itself from wherever and come and destroy you he said he was tired and one night he took out time that if he's to die here he would die and he would pray listen to me true story he was praying he said he had come here with an oil that i prayed for and then you know he went back and applied that oil and he was praying and praying and praying and then it looked like he fell into a trance and according to him he said i walked to him and i told him to lift two of his hands and when he lifted his hands i started removing what looked like maggots out from his hands like that removed or uh, maybe a number of them when the gentleman said that happened by the next day he got a job next day he got a job see i've told you time does not change anything you must engage with prophecy you must engage with prophecy don't wait until miracle service when you write your prayer request and bring it here go and write it now and trust God for grace one hour in the night will not stop your sleep we spend three hours worrying wake up in the night every man in koinonia is an intercessor let me tell you if you're a married man in this place and you are not an intercessor you are not a good ambassador learn it wake up and pray put that request on the ground place your hand on it pray it will look like nothing is happening don't mind what you are seeing you just pray forever oh lord thy word is settled let me tell you what will happen when you pray satan will use the sense realm to send images that negate what you are trying to do because he knows that to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace you can even finish that prayer and go back to bed and have a dream that is another negative connotation and you stand up and say but i just wasted my time so these three days prayer and fasting is nothing if it was not bringing an effect to hell the devil would not send you that kind of dream the key is to remain let me tell you this there are certain prayers that you don't pray for one day let me be sincere with you and i don't mean to insult anybody but that understanding that when you pray once is done well i may not have enough experience to challenge that but i can tell you the one i know that when you stay on an issue huh, and you pray and cry jesus prayed he came out saw the disciples went back and prayed the same words the same way three times jesus prayed bible said looking up to jesus not up to any prophet or any man of god don't pray once and sit down how long do i pray until you see the feast manifest in the earth realm you pray on when you see the the cloud manifest in the earth realm it gives you a sign then you know that those realities have reached otherwise please pray if it takes 21 days pray the grace for the the spirit of gluttony that will not allow you to fast and pray i curse it now in the name of jesus it's a different thing if you have a health issue that may not allow you to pray there are many of us the last time you fasted was during um fasting and prayer that's not healthy for your spiritual life please don't say it does not matter everybody know we know where we are coming from by god's grace our children will not go through this but in between where you are coming from and where you are going you must stand as a bridge and flog this thing out once and for all if you don't make room for the nations you will never be beyond the nations that's why there are pastors that will never pastor more than 50 members more than 100 members more than 500 members more than a thousand members because the capacity they have not made room for the blessing is God speaking to us please don't just get angry and be frowning at your boss and say this man is so wicked this guy just got a job in two months he's promoted him proficiency proficiency closely tied to that I spoke about laziness 
Oh, by the way, Proverbs 22 verse 29 says, See thou a man diligent in his business. It gives you an assurance. It says you will not stand before mean men. Average people. Once you are diligent, it will defy every other barrier and make sure you meet with the kings of that sphere of influence. I've met with people that ordinary my level in life would never qualify me to see them. Not even by accident. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Laziness. Proverbs 10 verse 4. Many young people in Nigeria are lazy. Lazy. Mentally lazy. Spiritually lazy. Physically lazy. We're in a hurry to show quick success. We're in a hurry to show that things are working. Life is not like that. The Lord put this in my heart to talk to us about it and I will. Proverbs. Proverbs what? 10 verse 4. Who is there? Some of you are still at Exodus. Proverbs. Proverbs. After Psalms. Proverbs 10 verse 4. It says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent make it rich. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, a lazy person, no inertia. He becometh poor. The word poor there is not just financially poor, you become bankrupt in every area. Romans chapter 12, verse 11. I found a very good scripture for ministers. Romans 12, verse 11. Let's hurry up so we can have time. Romans 12 verse 11. Shibala kura sibranya namana. 12 verse 11. Are you there? Say amen. One to read. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. He said, not slothful. The word slothful there means laggy. You are, not, you are not giving life the kind of aggression it takes. Right? He said not slothful in business. Diligent, fervent, zealous in spirit. Serving the Lord. So you want to serve the Lord? You want to serve his body? You must be competent. Please hate average. Let me tell you something. As you are sitting down here, the number one thing that should happen to you this night is tell yourself the truth. I've tried, but compared to where God wants to take me, the journey is still far. It will help you to humble yourself. Whether they write Apostle Jakes, Bishop Jakes, right? It's an ugly scene to see an incompetent person boasting. It's a very ugly scenario. My goal is that we'll have the brightest of the brightest and the best of the best. The head of, the head of um, technical is here. I went to pray for his office at the bio, bio what? Biotech, that biotech place. And when I went in, I looked at his office and I looked at everything. I said, wow. It's not about size. It's about content. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's about content. At least I know that there is a project that they are on now. Projects of, of hundreds of millions. Competence. When you become competent, let me tell you brothers and sisters. All of a sudden where you are coming from will never matter. Jeroboam, the Bible says his mother was a widow. Meaning she did not have the opportunity to do much. But competence. Please, there are many of us here, it is your competence that will wipe the tears of your parents. They didn't go to school. They done their best. Don't sit down in the average and keep forcing your mother, your father, the poor people doing their best. Rise up and change your status. Don't just sing it as a song. Is God speaking to anyone here? 
I read the story of Joseph so that it will minister to us because many of us are young people. Joseph was 30 years. 30 years. And as a matter of fact, out of that 30 years, about 12 to 30 of that 30 years was spent as a slave. What is your excuse? You are a keyboardist. You are the only one who claps for yourself when you play. And you are angry and say, oh Lord, open doors for me. You see, the, the problem is, God does not want to disgrace his name. Are you getting me? Because you are an object of praise. Everything that leaves you reveals the glory of God. It's called doxazo, a display of his glory. You must be competent. Competent. I always do this. Mike, play something. Play, just play anything on the keyboard. And um, listen. Did you know, did you know that what you just played is exactly what they are crying for in many churches? And they will find him and not even ask, what is it? Nobody will ask whatever and say, come, we are willing to pay you. Huh? And you are there pay, playing the things with your fingers and say, Lord, this church, I already see my destiny. No matter what you saw in your dream, I guarantee you, if you are not diligent, you won't enter into it. Praise the Lord. You are a doctor. The first person you gave an injection had problem. Second person had problem. Third problem. Before you blame demons, we're going to, there will be deliverance here shortly. But I told you that the biggest problem of Africa is blaming demons. You can't take demons to court. You can't arrest them. We, we like the fact that they are invisible entities. We excuse our failures. Everything demons. You woke up by nine, I know it's a spirit that, that stopped me. Huh? I planned for five. What happened? You are to go for a job interview by nine. By 8.30, you are strolling around carelessly. As if it's your place. As if you are the director. You are, the CEO that will interview you was there by seven. You stroll around, you came late and said, in the name of Jesus, lift up your head. Oh, ye gates. See that? The Bible says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience, when your obedience, when your own part of the equation is complete. Say, I refuse to be average. Say it, I refuse to be average. At least I'm better than him now. You see, that's the demonic attitude that keeps people as failures. They look around and say, eh, thank God, I'm not good, but at least I'm better than this sister. Even you, you know I'm better than you. God wants to lift his body and it does not take too long but the greatest publicity is to remain in the secret place sharpen yourself become exceptional the Bible says and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance when John appeared with uncanny accuracy he knew that this was Jesus he said behold the lamb behold the lamb he didn't mistake in Jesus for John the beloved he didn't mistake him because he asked all the questions in the secret place. Gideon defeated the Midianites. He stayed and asked the question and made sure he was ready. Look at David. David looks at Goliath. And while others are chickening out, David comes. He ran to him. That's what competence does. It gives you confidence. When others are running away, you say, where is the challenge? They were going to hang all the magicians in the days of Daniel. The king said, by tomorrow, if you don't tell me my dream and the interpretation, just know you are dead. And Joseph said, um, I mean, Daniel said, allow me. And the Bible says in the night, the secret, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And when he got up, he said, oh king, 
this and that and that and he was promoted instantly listen brothers and sisters contend for mastery contend for mastery those of us who are at work contend for mastery don't be a liability to your place of work and expect promotion it's not fair contend for mastery and people will look for you they will beg you there are people who are paid millions of dollars to speak for one hour dr miles munro one of my greatest mentors died last year he wrote about 54 books and about 49 or so of them were bestsellers it wasn't just because he was anointed he consulted for government ten thousand dollars per hour even if it's just to look at your face competence hallelujah i'm a builder i'm a builder you build a house as if the ground is falling why should they invite you again right they send you to go and buy something you buy something substandard you don't even know what is the real thing refuse incompetence you trust God to take you to the area of worship. Challenge. Is this not the issue of competition? This is the issue of standing out to give God room so that you will shine like the stars. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing so that you will be called blameless and pure children of the most high and you will shine like the stars as you hold forth the word of life. Be competent. Be competent. No room for laziness. Say amen. So you must gain mastery. Mastery attracts people across significant spheres of influence. Once you have mastery in an area, it will attract significant people in that area. I receive phone calls and text messages and I'm amazed at certain people who call me. They do not even know that they are the people that I have desired to see myself. And they call me. Hello sir, how are you? I said, let me quickly humble myself. Fine, sir. I am so, 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 and so. Wow, it's my pleasure. Please, how can I see you? Whatever it is to take you, we can send a driver to come and pick you. This is urgent. Ah! Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. No more I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better Let me tell you something. Success is not what compels attention. Consistent success is what compels attention. Sooner or later, your grace will be needed. The darkness in the world is too much for you to be ignored if you pay your price. Because not everybody is ready to be competent so when you become exceptional forget about the criticism for now with time people will swallow their words and look for you i assure you the same boss that said over my dead body will be alive and will be the one to shake you and say we are partners in progress by the time his company knows dives he will find you for sure is god speaking to anyone here Whatever your hand findeth to do. That's what my Bible says. It said do it with all your might. Give it the best. Give it the best. I refuse mediocrity in my life. I refuse mediocrity. I will sharpen the sword of ministry. I will make sure I am exceptional. To deliver word in season to God's people. The sick will be healed. The body will be guided. Whatever quota I have been anointed. And have been graced. I will do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best. My very best. I'll do my best. So could it be that the reason why God has not announced you, listen, could it be that the reason why God has not announced you is because he does not want you to blow that opportunity. God is saying prepare. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Say it prepare. 
That's the word of the Lord for now. Prepare. Prepare. See the testimony of our brother Aaron. One side he's leaving a job, another job is coming. A federal government job. We're going to talk about the anointing. But brothers and sisters, let us not deceive ourselves. God will judge me if I don't tell you the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The anointing is only active when it comes upon a refined gift. When God anoints your grace, when God anoints your ability, you become a sign and a wonder. That takes me to the next thing I'll talk about very briefly. The anointing. You are ready for the anointing among other things when you refine your gifts, when you refine your abilities, when you refine it, then you are ready for the anointing. Sharpen yourself. Sharpen yourself. And then you are ready for the anointing. The fire never fell until there was a sacrifice upon the altar. The fire does not just fall. The anointing falls when you are prepared, when you are ready, then you become relevant. 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 I refuse to be relegated and I refuse you and forbid you from being relegated. Not just because you are a Christian but because you do not have what to offer. Hallelujah. My younger brother, very brilliant gentleman. When he graduated, a job was not forthcoming and I looked at him. I told him, young man, just keep sharpening your ability. You are too gifted to be ignored. It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. For one year, that guy, very intelligent young man, but he committed his best. He gave his all. He was very, very serious. He was getting a job that they were paying him 5000 I told him, no problem. Stay there. Just be serious. He became exceptional. If he did not come for work, they would know. And all of a sudden, it was like a dream. He was called to become a lecturer in the University of Joss. He's a lecturer right now. No devil stopped it. No devil stopped it. Everybody say competence. When they called him and he spoke to them, they knew this was a bright material. If you are called, if the kings that are to lift you call on you right now, will you enter the palace and go back to the prison? Or will you enter the palace and shut the door of the prison forever? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, connect me to that person. Connect me to that ministry. Give me an opportunity to preach in that bigger platform. And God is saying, are you prepared? As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to bless you. But have you done your work? Are you prepared? I vowed a vow in my life. I will never enter the presence of greatness and go back to my old level. If I step into any atmosphere of greatness, I am prepared in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. When your preparation is complete, then you are ready for the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed that Jesus Christ after he spent time learning the, the, the Pentateuch and prepared himself getting an exact blueprint of his assignment the bible says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and then together his diligence and the anointing of the holy spirit the bible says he went about doing good became invincible and healing all that were oppressed of the devil he said, I have found David, my servant, Psalm 89, verse 20, downwards. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. I had to find him. I found David since, but he had not done his work. Now I have found my servant. And with my holy oil, I have anointed him. Hallelujah. A man in the construction of the tabernacle, the architect of that construction, he was called Bezalel. The Bible says he was a man who was gifted in craftsmanship. And the anointing of the spirit came. Look, let me tell you, when God anoints your grace, he will command men to hear you 
and no, even if you are living in a cave, you become a city that is set on a hill that cannot, cannot. You spend your time praying and studying the word and opening up yourself and making yourself available. Then that unction will come upon you. It comes in a heavy way that nobody will deny the hand of God upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a powerful thing to see someone who has done his assignment and is carrying the unction of the spirit. He becomes undeniable, invincible. No matter what you say about that person, the world is too dark for the, that grace to be ignored. I show you a key. God wants you great. God wants you blessed. For many of us in this miracle service, this is the key to the next dimension. I don't just want us to say it is it's raining, raining, let it rain and so on and so forth. No. Hallelujah. Grace. And I salute so many people who left various places to come tonight because it is part of your, play your own part. And tonight grace will come upon you and it will distinguish you. Like Saul, you will go back and they will say, ah, ah. Is Saul also one of the prophets? When did you enter this dimension? Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. It's not magical. It's a formula. And God is calling us. Wipe the tears of your family. Forget about the challenges of now. That's why we are here. To address it. But above and beyond that, you must make up your mind, brothers and sisters, that something must be different about my life. Make up your mind that by next month's miracle service, I'm coming a new person. I'm coming a better person. Your phone that used to be on silent, by March, calls are coming every day. You wake up with calls and text messages. Men are, are placing demands on the grace, willing to pay any amount, job or no job. There are people who are not working, but they are getting the salary of CEOs because people will pay for your gift. Let me tell you, it says buy the truth. God put a price tag on the truth. And if you have the truth, men will buy the truth. They will pay you. And they will call it a privilege. Is God speaking to someone here? And don't say, I didn't go to school. Or I didn't have the opportunity. I cannot speak English. No, no, no. None of those things. Master whatever God has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? master whatever he has given you and tonight an anointing comes on it and i send you like the foxes of samson and you will step in and begin to do wonders the pride of every true leader is not that he becomes a superstar i've said it again and again that true leadership the hallmark of leadership is that you are able to influence followers to also become leaders not maintain followers Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shortly before we rise, I want you to pray as you are seated. You know the area in your life God has been wanting to bless you. But the truth is your incompetence has limited him. Inside and outside, no matter how far, lift your voice and talk to your maker. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. This music ministry... Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Competence. Exceptional competence. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of being a mediocre. I'm tired of my life looking as if you are not mighty. I'm tired of joining the crowd in mediocrity. In this season of the rain, I'm challenging myself. Come on, pray, young and old. It's time for a new season. I arise and I shine for my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Never will I be termed forgotten. But I will be called Pula. Pula. The land of delight. I reject mediocrity in business. Mediocrity in ministry. As a student, I reject mediocrity. I challenge laziness. Pray. As a worker, I am the best staff. 
I am an envoy. Pray. I break ordinary standards. I refuse mediocrity. Pray. As a minister of the gospel, I contend for grace. I stop joining the crowd in mediocrity. Go ahead and pray. As a businessman, I become exceptional. 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 I'm an ambassador. I represent the parliament of heaven. And I represent God at the highest level of excellence. Pray, Koinonia. As you cry upon him, he grants you grace. Lord, you want to change our stories in this season. We make room. We make room. We make room. We make room. We reject the spirit of laziness. Time and chance happen to them all. Opportunity and seasons come to them all. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray this prayer point. You're going to ask God for grace. Mention the areas where you need God to grant you grace to be competent. There are books you will need to buy. There are seminars you will need to attend. There are mentors you will need to find. Whatever it will take to be like an axe that has been sharpened. Go ahead and pray. I receive that grace. Grace for competence. Exceptional competence. Don't let any man preach you against competence. Incompetence will make you poor. Incompetence will make you angry. Incompetence will make you a failure. Incompetence will make you average. I must stand out. I must stand out. In my generation, I must stand out. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Listen, I'd like you to pray pray for grace to be outstanding lift your voice grace to be outstanding forget about the pain of today the bible says for our light afflictions which is what for a moment walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory pray while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are temporal subject to change the closed door is subject to change. When you are competent, nations will celebrate you. Without bias, they will celebrate you. They will demand your grace. They will pay for it. the Lord. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind today. Go back and buy the books you need to buy. Go and sell those shoes and buy books. Are you getting it? He said, I, Daniel understood by books. Stop living a fake life. Go and pack those materials. Sell them and buy what will give you relevance. The Bible speaks about the prophet Samuel. He said the word of the Lord did not fall in his mouth. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. 
Don't applaud yourself when you don't have to. Be competent and the world will applaud you. And you will not be ashamed of it. You will not be ashamed to stand before the platforms he gives you. Because you know that you have, you have done your assignment. You will always be ashamed. You will always envy successful people. You will always hate them when you remain a mediocre. But when you rise, you become colleagues in progress. You become partners in progress. You celebrate them because you have become colleagues. Hallelujah. Now to the business of the night. I want us to pray. The Lord is going to do a quick walk in this place. There are mighty healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, my time for a visitation has come. Pray from the depth of your heart. Inside and outside. No matter how far you are, pray. Hallelujah. 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 Insist that you must be touched this night. Insist that something must change it doesn't take time it just takes one encounter you came with a lot of challenges don't sit down and waste your time make sure you cry unto god tell the lord exactly what you want tonight go ahead please speak to the lord especially for those standing outside make sure you talk to him I feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear We see the rain of your love We feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear So let it rain let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? Let it rain. Let it rain. Open. hallelujah hallelujah listen i don't care what the issue is let your faith rise right now are you hearing what i'm saying i see sick people all around inside and outside and i see all kinds of people but i want you to know tonight that the god of wonders is still in this place so let hope rise Darkness trembles in your holy life. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everyone. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Listen. Tonight there is an unusual anointing upon me. I began to sense this right from home. There will be massive deliverance right now. Massive deliverance. There are people who have come. There are families that have come from far and near. Hallelujah. And every challenge, every power of darkness. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Participate. Listen. We are going to shout that name. Please don't you think it's just a chorus or it's a formula. There is an anointing with it. Because it's a name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. You are going to shout that name. At the count of three. As you shout that name. There will be all kinds of deliverances. Many of you, you are standing in not just for yourself. But for your family members. All kinds of spirits and spells attempting to bring back what Jesus died for. In the name of Jesus, I speak to the realm of the spirit and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every foul devil, every covenant, every spell at the count of three, let the fire of God separate those people right now. One, two, three shake those devils i command those forces in the name of jesus i cast out those devils bring them out the fire is falling on witchcraft outside the fire is falling every power that is not of god i send the rod of judgment every power that is not of God everyone standing upon this ground I come with an apostolic anointing in the name of Jesus Satan let God's people go there's no hiding place for the power of God is everywhere there is no hiding place not for witchcraft there is no hiding place I command judgment let the angels of the living God move across this congregation and break chains hallelujah I see a lot of chains lift your hands again I see chains so many chains break chains Chains break. Listen, some of you, this chains has lasted for years and decades. I don't care how long it has been. As you shout that name again, I see many people outside. You will know the chain has broken. That embargo over your family, you will know it when it happens. Because I hear sounds of chains at the count of three. Shout that name again with all your might. And I command that as they shout, may those chains break. One, two, three. Chains of stagnation. Chains. Chains. 
standing on this ground will go back with the chains holding you I'm speaking to the powers they know the voice of God this is the season of the rain this is the season of the rain and in the name of Jesus now over families any family under the sound of my voice you have suffered mysteriously I come in the name of the Lord whose I am and I command judgment upon the powers of darkness judgment upon the powers of darkness right families shake it take it take it shake it take 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 we invoke the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abraham. We invoke better the blood that speaks better things. Hallelujah. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, put to an end, annihilate. It says, Son of man, what seest thou? Zechariah 1 18. It says, Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, and against Jerusalem, so that no man will lift up his head. He said, But I have sent four carpenters, and they will terrorize those horns. We have come tonight to terrorize the power of darkness. They must let you go. After nine plagues, Pharaoh refused to let them go. He said, yet will I send one more plague upon Pharaoh and Egypt and after that, he will let you go. Jesus paid the price in full completely. There is no reason why the devil should tie you down. When he was on the cross, he said it is finished and we are here to enforce that which, that fatigue in the name of Jesus for those in front here they represent families I don't care what kinds of spirits or entities at the count of three you will let God's people go and release their families no matter how long the blood of Jesus annihilates the legal hold you have I don't care what covenant you have in the name of Jesus therefore I speak to every foul spirit that at the count of three, you let them go never to return. Right now in the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Out you go. Out you go. Out you go. Never to return. Out you go. By the ministry of the blood. By the ministry of the blood. I cost you. By the ministry of the blood, release the families, release their finances, release their destinies. Go now, go now. I compel you by the blood of Jesus. The blood opens the gates. 
of captivity. That Lord opens that gate. Hallelujah. I declare every family under bondage free. I don't care how long the doors have been closed. We open it now. You will begin to experience unlimited breakthroughs. Hallelujah. Who is Stephanie? Stephanie. I hear a name Stephanie. You are wearing a like orange veil. Do we have somebody like that? Is it an orange veil or something? Stephanie. Bring that woman, that lady or that woman, whoever. Just let them win. Okay, young lady. This is the spirit of death. Bring her. Lay hands on her stomach. I curse that spirit. Every spirit of infirmity out now. Leave her alone. She will rise up completely healed. Stephanie, Stephanie. I see here the name. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a family in a vision. We have to hurry up. We really want to finish first. So I'm seeing a family. There is a family that came here. I'm seeing four people. Like, is it four children? Or something a family do we have someone like that please if, if it's yours if it's your case or it looks like your own just signify and let's know if there is none we can move forward because this is what the Lord is showing me I'm seeing a family it's like four children they are here they came here Shut up, is it you you are the one where are the people where are your children come why are you sitting back come That there is a call of God upon the family not just your mother but upon the family and it's a prophetic call it's a prophetic call right it's not only your mother I didn't I'm, I'm, I don't know you people but the hand of God is going to come upon you it's a mighty anointing of the spirit it will come upon you are you part of the family huh you are related. You are what? You are on your own. Okay, please, until I call you, but come, come and stand since you have come. For the Lord is going to bring restoration. This is the first thing that will happen. Mark it. Restoration. Number two. What do you do? the Lord is going to lift you why am I seeing a ring in your hand I'm not seeing a physical ring but it's in the spirit I'm seeing a ring your wedding bells are ringing are you married huh this is what I'm <laughs> we don't feel embarrassed we are a family marriage is not a bad thing Abi mommy is it a bad thing it's not a bad thing because there is nobody and you are wondering, this is what you are thinking in your heart. Where is the person? Listen, he said, we see the fire. We see the fire. We see the wood. Where is the lamb? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. The same word that comes. Listen, listen, my dear, you don't know me. I'm not a herbalist. Are you getting my point? When the Lord brings a word, it will make it happen. My brother. This year you will hold finances that will make you afraid. Come, what do you do? What does what what do you do? Huh? That's not it at all. It, this one is just for generosity, just to prepare you. God is going to open a strange opportunity for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? 
is a strange opportunity. If you people have ever doubted whether the hand of God is upon your mother, I'm telling you, she's not fake. I'm saying it now. Because they have been talking about this woman. She sees and people have been saying she's fake. I'm say, if this woman is fake, she will not enter this place. I guarantee you, except I'm not a man of God. Please, she's not fake. What she needs is, is the, an, an accurate alignment through the word of God so that her prophetic vistas will be sharpened. She has a lot of prophetic insight, but the word level is very low. So there is dwindling. That stability in the spirit is not there. That's all. This mama is not fake. Because I'm seeing her walking in a prophetic and a healing anointing. Very powerfully. Come, madam, come. Let's pray to the king. You have taken all the glory. You have taken. Hold hands, both of you. Mm. I show you a mystery. Madila Katabarata. One will chase a thousand, but two will chase ten thousand. Confirm your word right now, oh God, as I speak. There is a transference of graces right now happening between both of you. It's a drinking together. It's a happy anointing that is coming because you will also step into a strong evangelical and prophetic anointing. Drink of that wine right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid to help her. You won't be with her forever. But the Lord is going to lift you in due season. And you will begin to see in a strange way. May the Lord bless you. May he anoint you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I break the embargo of darkness over the family. Come. You are a great lady but the devil wants to oppress your life. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Mm, for he is here. Light shines in the darkness. You must release her. Let her go now. I'm seeing an old woman's face. But in the name of Jesus, I declare, you step into strange dimensions of grace. I command deliverance to you right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. It's all right. I bless this family. The Lord changes your story. You will return with dramatic testimonies. In Jesus name. Newi. I'm hearing a name of a place. There is. There's, Newi. I know it's an Igbo place right. There is. There is, a, there is somebody. I think a lady or a guy or somebody. From that place. Newi. Who is that? Please, if it's your case, whether you are outside, just make your way so that you don't waste our time. Please, there are so many other people. Come, mama. She's your mother. What's wrong with her? Is this working? Please help us. She's having problem with her legs. She's having problem with her legs. knee problems. Her legs. Oh. Her legs. Her Arthritis. You don't know. Yeah. You I love God. Sleep. Very well. Very well. Yeah? Very well. Well enough to marry a man of God? Yes. Because that's your husband. He's a man of God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know how, madam. <laughs> See mommy laughing. <laughs> mommy, come. What is wrong with her leg, please? Let's, let's not... Well, it has been disturbing her for some time now. How long? Up to two years now. I feel a swoon in my waist by my left leg, fish ground. I used to feel serious pain. Don't, don't, don't cry, it's okay. Mama, look at me. You came here because you believe in Jesus. Yes. Look at me, just look at me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I receive healing. I receive healing. Pain. Pain. Go. Go now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, you believe Jesus. I believe Jesus. Run up here. Come. Just come. Forget about the legs. Come. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Look. Praise the Lord. I came to this program today. I'm no more feeling the pain. I even I went Check. to hospital today. My 
Come on, keep it. To break every chain. Break every chain. Let's go. Come. Where are you from? Cross River. Huh? Cross River. You are serious about your love for God, right? Because you are going to marry a man of God. Yes, I am. You, are, you know it now. Yes. What I'm saying, you have known it. I'm just confirming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Is it a lie? <laughs> they just say I'm lying. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies know a lot of things. They just hide it. I'm not endorsing your dream and your vision. No, I don't know what you saw. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that. Truly, truly. The grace and the spirit upon your mother is upon you because your mother is a good woman. Mama, tell me one thing you want God to do in your family. I want my children to serve God. I want all of them to serve God. Father, stretch your hands towards this family, everybody. What a request. Not for money. Many of you will ask for money. I will give me money sharp, sharp. In the name of Jesus, you are the son. Where are the rest? You are the only one. Just two of you. My children are 11 in number. 11? Yes. And I have six graduates. I thank God for what God has been doing in my life. I thank God. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands and pray for this family. 11 children. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. I bless this family. Let doors of prosperity be open. Let doors of advancement be open. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus for Mama's miracle. Rejoice with them and you will have your own testimony. Hallelujah. Who brought this person? Help us now. Where are the people? Huh? It's okay, Mama. Relax. What is the situation? What is it? He can't walk. Yes, he problem is what happened to him? It's okay. okay. What happened to him? Look at me. How are you? Can you talk? Yeah, let me talk. What happened to you? Uh, I fell sick last year October when they took me to the hospital. So we went for so many examinations. And they say it's cancer. And when they refer me to Shika here. They said you have cancer. Yes. So sir. right now you have cancer. Yes, sir. So they've left you to die. Yes, sir. Cuffed out of your legs. Yes, sir. I cannot even walk, sir. You can eh? I can't walk, sir. Since when? Since when did he stop walking? Last month. You believe that the power of God is going to set you free? Yes, sir. My brother, look at me. Jesus is able to heal you. You believe that? You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. There is a spirit. I curse that spirit right now. I curse that spirit. Right now, you feel fire going through your body. I curse that spirit. Upon these legs. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the power of God. I command that spirit. Leave him right now. Move your legs. Start moving your legs. Try to move it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you feeling the legs? Do you feel the legs? Now I release strength to these legs. Right now. I release strength to these legs. In the name of Jesus I release strength to these legs right now. Exercise the legs and let him start moving it. Go ahead. The cry in your family comes to an end by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord visits you and brings to an end. He brings to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please call this mama, this madam. Come, he will answer you. Come. Massage his leg. I will tell you when to pick him up. 
He's visiting you in a strange way, bringing breakthroughs to you, refining the fire, and causing the hand of wickedness over your family. That embargo is lifted over your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come, ma. Don't worry. God is touching everybody. Just connect to what he's doing. Mommy, look at me. Please don't cry. Look at me. Just look at me. I want you to know that the captivity in your family has come to an end. I know you are crying. Don't worry about it. Believe me. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's not here. No come. Is that all there is to the story? So when I left house, he never come back from work. I need to pray because your marriage is shaking. You need the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Mama, don't cry. God is bringing you restoration. That's what I hear in my spirit. And I command and I prophesy restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. I cause that force of darkness right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at an angel walking through this road. This is what I'm looking at an angel. The Lord wants me to talk to somebody. That person will come under the power of God right now. When that happens, please let me have that person. You have taken all the voices. You have taken all the lamentations. You have taken all the praise. You have made let me yours. Please bring out. I give you, I give you, I give you the highest praise. A fire that ignites you and sets you free. I command in the name of Jesus that influence of darkness leaves you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, please. All those who came here specifically for healing miracles, find your way to the front right now. Worship team, give us a powerful session of worship as we pray. Please, don't make it rowdy, inside and outside. Aside from the, the family that I minister to, if you came with a sick person, please come and line up here quickly. Let's save time. Expect the power of God to touch you. Please. You see what the Lord is doing. And all of us who are standing, if there is a loved one or somebody you know, as you are standing, connect to them. Please, don't lose connection with this service. Some of you can take steps of faith. God is already touching people. Don't lose connection. No matter how many we are here to minister to you. It will be a quick walk. Pastor Jexa, it's going to be a very quick walk because of time. There are still some other things God wants to do. Especially the prophetic aspect of this meeting. There is a guy outside. The power of God is going to hit him in a mighty way. God is bringing restoration in his life. A gentleman, it will be like a tornado. It will be a mighty encounter. Now listen. All of you standing. I want you to know that Jesus heals. The price for your complete healing has been paid. I know that there are HIV people standing here. There are people with all kinds of medical reports. I guarantee you the price has been paid. And so as we pray, everyone I like you to connect. Because some of you shortly... You will be receiving strong impartations of the healing anointing. So you must focus. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. Elijah said, if you can see me, don't, don't be distracted, please. Hallelujah. Please pass your request. Ushers, let's hurry up, please. Get them to the aisle. Just pass it to the last person. 
the last person by the side, please help the ushers inside and outside. It's not a ritual. There is a strange mystery of answered prayers in this place. Please. Begin to pray in tongues as you do that, please. Everywhere. Begin to pray in tongues. All those connecting with us online, it's time for them to connect now so that we can... Hallelujah. We're not trying to build doctrines out of no no I'm I'm one person that fights tradition, especially where the Spirit of God is not there. But this was an instruction God gave according to what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah carried the threat letter and brought it to the altar and laid it there before God. Hallelujah. Please, very quickly, inside and outside. If others sent it to you by text and you've not copied it out, just you can just keep it and connect by faith. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord Jesus, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the requests of your people. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. It says, with prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Make it known. Don't hide it. Make it known. Begin to talk to the Lord about what is on the altar here right now. Please pray. Herein is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Some of you, the request you wrote here, only God can grant it. That's why we don't read it. We just pray. Because probably if some of us see what you've written here, our faith level may not be able to take it. Please make sure everybody's request gets here. No matter how long. Let's do it very quickly. I have seen... God do strange things strange things in the lives of people we have seen all kinds of dramatic miracles please I want you to know the person you are praying to I want you to know that it's not to Joshua Selman it's not to an idol you are not praying to the president of this nation the king of kings is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything so hard for me to do? I am. I am Hallelujah. Myself and Pastor Jakes will be praying passionately on this request. I want you to believe that as we make contact with your request, I tell you the angels. There are some of you, as we are praying on it, instantly, you will begin to get answers. In one minute, everybody begin to blast in tongues as we pray. Hey. Father, hear the prayers of your people in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let there be all kinds, all kinds of miracles. I agree with my brother, all kinds of miracles, supernatural jobs. Supernatural lifting in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto you that answer prayer. We want to talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight 
is in the law of God. So as someone says, the things that is in life is in the law of God. And don't be maintained day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit well, that notification bell Almighty to receive Lord, more updates from us because we know that, that whatever content Lord, here is going to set you on calls at every time. We it's going to make you attain God, Lord, whatever stature that, that Christ wants you to attain. Thank we ask you. for your mighty miracles, breakthroughs, Lord, the blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Father, we pray for jobs, amazing, blessed jobs, Lord, miracles, miracles, Lord, healings. Of families Lord we pray that Lord contracts that been overdue Lord we pray for sudden calls calls Lord in the name of Jesus Lord we pray Lord the tears of your people Lord the needs of your people in the name of Jesus we command that angels responsible for bringing answers to these prayers be released right now in the name of Jesus let the heavens be open over your people in the blessed name of Jesus. My Father, as we lay these prayer points before you, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus. We ask that doors be opened. Let greatness arise in your people in the blessed name of Jesus. Thank you because God, as we ask in the name of Jesus, we know you answer in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please rise up everybody. There is a heavy anointing in this place. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prophecy. I may not be able to call everybody one by one. But the word of God. Kabbalah Taya. He said it's the discerner of the thoughts and the intents. No matter where you are. One word of prophecy can tear open whatever limitation please i want you to believe everything you see us do in this miracle service is as instructed there is no room for entertainment we fear god and will not gather you to waste your time hallelujah the bible says believe in the lord and you shall be established he said believe in his prophets and you shall prosper lift your hands as your level changes lift your hands something will happen to you Please, I want you to receive as I pray. Shout amen from the depth of your heart. Amen means let it be so. It's an act of faith. Hallelujah. I bring to an end the era of mourning in your life and your family. I say it again. The era of mourning by prophecy let morning end in your life and in your family hallelujah hear me every embargo that has stood on the way to your next level by the weapon of the prophetic in the name of the lord jesus i command those limitations broken human limitations demonic limitations I command them broken now I command them broken now hallelujah hallelujah I declare every dimension you should have entered by now that you have not entered by the mystery of restoration makoto tekete skeparata telekotopai in the name of Jesus, between now and the next miracle service, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, 
step into those dimensions I prophesy to you step into those dimensions step into those dimensions hallelujah I pray for every student here listen this proverb will no longer be used in your life listen that proverb that makes God look as if he's not alive in your academics in the name that is above all names we send angels to every department of every campus represented here we send angels to every faculty may they tear down may they uproot every trace of wickedness may they tear down may they uproot in the name of Jesus let missing scripts be found let students that have been victimized be restored in the name of Jesus hallelujah for God has not given us the spirit of fear there are many people you want to take steps but fear is keeping you down in the name of Jesus the Bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage I cause fear from your life now I cause fear from your life now I cause fear I cause fear in the name of Jesus hallelujah I pray for you there are many who have been praying Lord reveal to me the purpose of my existence there are people who have been crying I don't want to waste my time in destiny I pray for you that through a night vision mysterious prophetic encounters may your exact assignment be revealed in the name of Jesus Christ there are people praying right now all you are you have come here for is the direction for the next level you just came to get direction I prophesy to you the Bible says and ye shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way I command between now and next week let there be accurate direction accurate direction in the name of Jesus I pray for you there are people here whenever they want to favor you people change their minds for reasons you do not understand I pray in the name of Jesus that every planting that is not of God that is making your helpers reject you in the name of the Lord Jesus I command them broken now I command them broken now hallelujah by the power of prophecy I connect you to the men that need to help you and lift you to your next dimension please take seriously what I'm saying in the name of Jesus I connect you I connect you business helpers ministry helpers academic helpers marital helpers receive the ministry in the name of Jesus prophecy is like rain your job is to receive it once you receive it it starts acting immediately in your life hallelujah I pray in the name of Jesus Christ over your health that spirit that keeps bringing recurrent health conditions the price has been paid and therefore by the blood I break you free from any covenant of infirmity I break you free from I command everyone under any spirit of infirmity that is recurrent 
may you be free once and forever hallelujah I challenge embargo of hardship over people and families there are families that love God but it's like hardship will never leave them in the name of Jesus we stand tonight in this place and we challenge the root of hardship by next miracle service return with breakthrough testimonies return with breakthrough testimonies you may not know how it will happen but may my God go before you and shock you hallelujah I pray for your finances in the name of Jesus there are many who are giving you are tithing you are faithful but it just looks like when things are about to happen there are limitations in the name of the Lord Jesus I declare that beginning from next month I invoke the mystery of divine supply the same way hear me the same way a raven the bible does not tell us where it came from but it brought bread for the prophet i command mysteriously may your gates be open now to receive the forces of the gentiles i pray for everyone called dull in this place you understand but something happens to your mind that 10 times better anointing that distinguishes people receive it in the name of Jesus I sense an anointing one more time I pray that prayer whatever stops you from understanding the Bible says and he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures I pray for you may understanding be granted unto you hallelujah favor the one factor that separates men that favor in a heavy dimension may it mantle you from now may favor mantle you from now in the name of Jesus financial favor marital favor academic favor favor in your job favor in ministry hallelujah everyone who is confused about life any aspect of life I bring that confusion to an end now I pray for all those who came here specifically trusting God for the fruit of the womb in fact I pray for you listen not just physical barrenness any area of your life this is the year of the rain and when rain falls barrenness stops therefore I command be fruitful in the name of Jesus fruitful multiply subdue and have dominion in the name of Jesus I command everything called dead in your life and your family I don't care for how long it has died your health your business your life in the name of the Lord Jesus I command resurrection right now in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you there are people who desire God you desire an encounter that's what you need you desire an encounter I pray for you may the angel of the Lord's presence visit you you may not understand what I'm saying may the angel of the Lord's presence visit you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for your gift your ability your skill whatever you are using that brings bread help her please 
I pray for you. The works of your hands. Because you are determined to be diligent. You will see the testimonies that will come from this prayer. I put an anointing on your skill. I put an anointing. I put an anointing on your ability. I put an anointing on your gift, on your work, on your skill. May it begin to produce in a supernatural dimension. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. I just want to do an impartation. There are people who have come from different places. Please be sensitive. We are out of time. We will soon round up. But it's time to receive something. Listen. Listen, I told you there will be many impartations. Hear me. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No matter what you are doing, when the grace is not there, you will struggle forever. Please hear me. Especially in ministry. If you are a minister of the gospel in this place, help her please. It's time for you to catch this thing for real. Is yours for the taking. Listen, I want to pray as I stretch my hands and pray inside and outside, wherever you are. You must not be in ministry like fivefold. Whatever area, many of you will begin to have dreams, encounters. Listen, many of you will step into healing graces. There's no time to move one by one, but I'm going. It's one of the major assignments God gave me tonight. Please believe it. You will argue it at your own detriment. There is a cheap route. The help of God is here to lift you. The help of God is here to take you. Lift your hands, everybody. Father, I pray that in the next two minutes, let there be from the front to the back, outside, let there be strange impartations at the count of three. One, two, three. Let the wind blow right now. Receive it. Prophetic graces. Apostolic graces. Dreams. Visions. Encounters. Dreams. Visions. Encounters. The word of knowledge. Gifts of the spirit. Let there be distributions. Right now. Right now. Right now. The gift of wisdom. The word of knowledge. The working of miracles. The gift of tongues. and interpretation of tongues. The gift of prophecy. Gifts of healing. Healing mantles. Receive it. Receive it. Leadership anointings. Leadership anointings. Leadership anointings. I impart it. Leadership anointings. Utterance, utterance, utterance. I release it to you. Utterance in the name of Jesus to communicate the things of the Spirit. Utterance, receive it. Utterance, I, I release upon you insight into scriptures, insight into the mysteries of the kingdom. I grant you access by grace to the mysteries of the spirit, the mysteries of dominion, the mysteries of prosperity, the mysteries of impact. Hallelujah. The final prayer I want to pray for you is honor many of you don't know what honor is honor is not the same thing as blessings you can be blessed but not honorable it says and Jabez was more honorable honor that fragrance that compels loyalty that fragrance zamatic alive lord everyone under the sound of my voice inside and outside May this grace that, 
that will bring honor to a man beyond your age beyond your level receive it now in the name of jesus i release it from the depths of my heart receive it in the name of jesus from today everywhere you go may honor follow you and i declare these hands that are lifted like aaron like joshua lifted up the hands of his servant moses i command may those hands never go down may the lord cut off from your life everything that will bring your hands down and i pray for marriages supernaturally may god connect people supernaturally in the name of jesus christ hallelujah as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members no matter where they are i prophesy as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members hallelujah now very quickly you are here you've never given your heart to the lord please hear me please keep standing everybody no moving around let's honor them just in one minute you're here inside and outside you have never made a decision for jesus christ or at one time you have made a decision for jesus but you found yourself dwindling you have seen the hand of god and jesus is calling you back home there's nothing to be ashamed of don't let any man cajole you win the war in your heart today for the sake of your destiny wherever you are please start running from your seat inside and outside and come out here i want to lead you personally to christ and pray for you go ahead are there people like that go ahead don't look at any neighbor don't look at anyone wherever you are inside or outside don't pretend it jesus is calling you very quickly very quickly where are those who are giving their lives to jesus inside or outside make your way to the front don't be ashamed please appreciate them coin on you as they come god bless you keep coming god bless you keep coming no matter how far rush and make your way young and old god bless you keep coming it's time to make it right don't play games with destiny jesus is calling you come and surrender everything totally and consciously totally and consciously please make way for them don't stop them make way for them come to jesus hallelujah i salute and congratulate every one of you for coming out hallelujah the prayer you are praying is not reciting a poem i want you to pray from the depths of your heart lift your right hand and say after me passionately and truly say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you i believe you died for me you rose again for me i surrender completely to you take charge of my life from today and forever i denounce sin i denounce satan and i receive eternal life into my spirit keep your hands lifted father receive these ones change them transform their lives radically i cause the power of sin from your life and i release grace upon you to experience hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not